That's not a bait, ladies and gentlemen. This is a bait. Let's go find ourselves a sea monster. Look at that bad boy swim. Woo! Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. Big baits, big fish. Hopefully this thing gets eaten. With three baits now rigged and swimming, it was time to cover some ground in search of a mighty Spanish mackerel. Yes, fish on. Oh, double. We got a double hook up. And I don't know what of because they aren't fighting. Oh no, that one's off. Oh, he's coming towards us. Oh, don't be barracuda, please don't be a barracuda. Oh, that is dead set. The worst way in history to lose a bait to one of these buggers. Mm. He was going absolutely nowhere. Oh, see, look at that. Ruined. Absolutely ruined. Oh, well. That's all that's left. Uh, I would almost prefer to just wrap the line around the anchor rope. These guys suck. Two from three on the old Barracuda. That's not what we came for and uh, that's not a great start. Three beautifully rigged baits, all destroyed. Bugger! Well, silly me, didn't have any more baits defrosted, so they're defrosting now. And I've got a garfish that I've had rigged and frozen for a long time. It's a bait. Hold the stum. Yeah, give this 10 minutes while the baits defrost. See, so, yeah, here we go. Once the baits had defrosted, it was back to the rigging station to sort out a few more mackerel lollies for the other rods.
How do they miss the hooks? How? Killing me. Five minutes later and I had another bait back out swimming. And then this happened. Yes! Well, I think I've got one. Please don't be another barracuda. Pretty sure that was a barracuda. And he's gone. Oh dear. We're in persistence fish territory now. I'm down. That's bait number five. Bait number five without a mackerel. Um, yeah. I just need one. Two would be great, but I just need one. I want to show you guys a ceviche recipe. Bit of a catch and cook. Um, but geez, that's hard work. Whew. I thought that was us. Took a little run, but yeah. I'm 900% sure that was a barracuda. And back to bait rigging once again. Well, we are starting to run out of light, guys. It's a quarter past four. I now have three baits back in the water. No mackerel. Five baits down. So, starting to get to the pointy end of the session. And we've got nothing to show for it so far. I really don't think the ceviche would have worked with a barracuda. Aside from the old uh, cigaterra, I don't think it would have tasted very good. Anyway, we've got at least an hour and a bit of light left. So, everyone cross your fingers and toes. We've got to pull a rabbit out of a hat here. It's, um, yeah. Yep, yeah, it's one of those sessions. Just gonna have to stick it out. There goes another bait. Almost pulled in half, no idea what did it. It's got no teeth, whatever it is. Might have been like a tuna or maybe a, um, a cobia or something, but definitely didn't find the hooks. Another bait down. After yet another quick rigging session, I had three baits back in the water, swimming enticingly behind the boat. But as the sun sunk behind the horizon, I couldn't help but think that the day was all but done. So in the last remaining glow of the sun, I began to pack up all my kit and drain the live well before I pulled the lines in and headed for home. You're kidding. Oh my goodness me. Proper final. big oh that was it that was my chance oh my goodness that was him guys that was him
Well guys, that's all that's left of me rig. 150 pound wire broke. Haven't had that, that happened before. It was a big fish and we did not land him. I haven't had a rig destroyed like that before, especially not the, uh, the wire breaking like that. So who knows? Who knows? We'll never know. But I'm pretty sure that's it. Sun is just about gone. Unfortunately, guys, that is how it goes sometimes. Sorry if I sound a little bit defeated. I really thought I was going to get on the Savo, but sometimes that's fishing. That is fishing. Ah, well, that's why we love it. That's what keeps us coming back. Sometimes you get big ones, you never know what they are. And, uh, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'll be back out here to give it a red-hot crack to see if I can find him next time. But for now, pull these lines in, call it a day. Damn it. Well, guys, not quite the fairy tale ending we were hoping for, was it? Unfortunately, you do get that on the big jobs. Not too much else you can do in situations like that, apart from go back to the drawing board and try to prepare yourself even better so it doesn't happen again next time. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of other stories like that that you guys have, so if you've got a good one, make sure you let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see me get back out there and try and get even with another sea monster, make sure you hit the like button and uh, yeah, let's get back out there and see if we can't get the job done. Now guys, I would hate to leave you with just a donut session for your Sunday, so here's a bit of footage from a trip out I did with the Wilson lads, heading deep, check it out. We're out in the Wilson boat today, Dicko's on the wheel, Cord's just beside me here, and uh, we've come out for a bit of an afternoon session, it's about lunchtime now, we're going to do a bit of deep dropping and then possibly some, um, some uh, float lining in the shallows a bit later on, but we thought we'd come out deep first. And this is what's happened. We've hooked up solid on and this is a serious, serious fish. Oh, are you on as well, Cord? Oh, get excited. Look at the bend in this live fibre deep drop rod. It is, we've had the, the rod tip in the water multiple times. The Mia Epoch has been in reverse. Oh, look at that. This is a good fish. I really want to see this one. Anyways, we're 150 metres away, so might as well get a wave out of Dicko. There's Cade, which is Cord's young bloke. Cord, how are you, mate? Yeah, good, Sam. Did you just get to the bottom? Yeah, I just got to the bottom. Just... Oh, uh, trying to go for a double up. The oh, there we go. That's him. That's him. That's him. Oh, that's him. Oh, that's him. He's stolen it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Fish. That's a real good fish. That's a good one. Oh, we're double hooked up. Happy Dicko? I might have to wicked chew him. Yeah. Yeah, that's a real nice fish. Just let him sit there. Oh, he might have. Did he get you in the bottom? Oh, you got toasted. That's how it happens, mate. Well. 100 metres away. 35 metres. This is a good fish. I love when you're excited, Sammy. Well, I'm excited. I love when you're excited. I'm excited because it's deep dropping and you absolutely never know what is coming up next. You're a pretty cool and calm character, but I'm excited when you get excited. <laughs> well, I was excited if, when we had two on. That was going to be pretty cool. We, we should be this from the start and said, this is a good fish. Oh, I reckon this is a bass or a blue eye. We should be getting some colour and a bit of angle here soon. Ten metres away, there he is. Oh, there he is, He's a good fish. What have we got? Might be a big, big barcode, maybe. Say again. What is it? It is a. <laughs> that is a monster bar uh, barcode. Oh, he's a good one. Yep. He's big. 
Oh, and there's the green eye shark. Oh, I think that's. Can I put this down? Yeah. We'll take a couple of photos. That's on the whole, whole body hair. Well, guys, that's a pretty good start to the afternoon. That's about, I'd say, 20 and a bit kilos of bark odd right there. It is a big, big fella. Look at the size of the gob on it. <laughs> that's why he was putting up a bit of a stink. That was an absolute cracker. And cord got wailed as well. And a uh, little hook pull, unfortunately. Oh, that is big. That's big and heavy. Well, hopefully we can build on it from here. But that's a good start when that's the first fish, isn't it? First fish in your box. <laughs> I've got to put it down. Yeah, mate. Pretty well. Oh. Pretty well. <laughs> yep. Let's do that again. That's him. Oh, he's got a lot too. Oh, he's taking line. Woohoo! Still taking line. Does it look like he just got me in something? Can you reverse up on him a touch? Uh, I think I'm stuck. He's got me on something, I'm pretty sure. I felt it go tunk. Oh. Hey, come on, guys. I said mine come off. They were broke. Aside from those couple of fish that reefed us, there was no more action out wide. So we thought we'd head into the shallows on dusk and see if we could crack a few sweet lip. But this was as close as we got. A cracking platinum snapper or Mo Wong for cord, a solid Moses for Cade, and a big old hook pull for Dicko. Oh Dicko! Yes Dicko! That's a real one. That's a big fish. Let me to get out of your way? Oh, no. <sighs> well guys, that was a pretty damn tough day on the water. You know, if people like Dicko and Cord can't put fish in the boat, then it's just not going to happen at all. My only saving grace was this big slob of the thing here. That's a new PB barcode by a long way. I weighed it, it's 20.1 kilo, so that's pretty big. Um, the only thing that's going to be more difficult, I reckon, is trying to fill it. These guys are slimy as, but I'm going to give it a red hot go. I reckon it'd probably be easier if you hung it up and did it like a deer and do it that way, but that's going to be hard to film, so we're going to give it a crack this way and see how we go. Plenty of good meat on these guys, so uh, yeah, a few good feeds. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's big. Let's have a crack. Here we go. didn't end up being too bad it was um, a bit hard with the old fillets trying to lift that up and cut under but we got there in the end two lovely containers jam-packed full of fillets and one big frame to deal with now usually I'd be scavenging the wings off fish like this but I've previously had big barcode wings and they weren't very good at all very tough so I'm gonna leave them on there. You'll also notice one thing I don't usually do is leave that bit around the stomach there. 
the last thing I wanted to do on a big cod like this is nick the stomach. They eat all sorts of crazy stuff and I didn't want that going over the meat at all. So it is a little bit wasteful, but I'd prefer to do that than to, and keep all the bacteria in his guts rather than let it get on the meat at all. Aside from that, pretty good return. We've done a pretty good job. Yummy bar cod for me. Well guys, as you saw, a bit of a tough old week on the salt and briny, but that's okay. You can't hit them every time. We all have dud weeks, it does happen. And I'll tell you what, I'm pretty damn happy with that big cod. Plenty of good fillets there, so I definitely won't be going hungry. Now guys, if you'd like to check out any of the gear we used in this episode, make sure you head over to wilsonfishing.com. They've got all that information and stacks more to get you out there and into a few fish. Now, plenty of new gear available on the Sammy Hiskey Fishing website like the deep drop rigs you would have seen us using for those cod. We caught those on 14 O's, but they go all the way down to 11 O's. They always go quick, so make sure you get in and grab yours very soon. The new Dawn Till Dusk hoodies are here and they look really, really cool. Fishing sunrise to sunset, that is how we roll. And another new addition, the Young Gun Tees. If you've got a Young Gun in your family, then they're definitely gonna need one of these. They're available in size two to 14, so Plenty of options there for the uh, young fisho enthusiasts. And of course, guys, plenty of other gear available as well. Hats, shirts, stickers, D-hookers, and plenty more. So head over, see if there's anything that tickles your fancy. Guys, thanks very much for tuning in for another week. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky Fishing Adventure. Cheers.